Mr. Big? I've taken the... Yeah, Mr. Big. What's up? Well, Mr. What's up? How are you doing, Mr. Big? I'm doing pretty good. How's it going, man? You know, it's going all right, Mr. Big. How did you get the name Mr. Big? Where's that name come from? It actually comes from an episode of King of the Hill. Okay. Tell, uh, uh, do you have a... what? Uh, do you have a particular reverence for King of the Hill? Uh, yeah, it was just one of those shows I watched when I was younger, you know? Does it have a lot of influence on your life right now? Do you still watch it? Uh, I used to. Not any, not anymore. Uh, it's on Hulu, though. Shout out to Hulu. Yeah, I'll shout out Hulu when they pay me to. Have you ever been confused? Uh, yeah, my cat used to hump my bed, and that was pretty confusing. Um, did you ever hear... Yeah, see, that's confusing, because you can't really ask animals why they do things. Yeah, and he was, like, intent on, like, staring at me while he did it. What do you think he wanted from you? I don't know, man. I, like, would scare him off, and then literally, like, five minutes later, he was back at it. Would he only hump the bed when you were around? Did you ever catch him in the act? He would only do it while I was, like, sitting on my computer. And he would always try to make eye contact. It was really weird. Um, <clears throat> do you think your cat was sexually attracted to you? I don't know. That's a good question. I don't know. That's oh, well I don't know. It could be like, I mean, I don't know. Maybe, maybe like the, maybe they were turned on by like the power that you had in that relationship because the relationship between a pet and a, a you know, a pet owner, it's, 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 you know, you're sort of like that cat's, um, you know, you're that cat's superior. Maybe they, you know, found the, the, uh, power that you had over them as their owner to be sexually alluring. See, but he didn't really like like to hang out with me otherwise, so it was just like a sexual thing, I feel. Did, did that make you feel used? It really did, actually, because I always had to go and clean the sheets after, and it was like a weekly occurrence. Mm, and you didn't even get to come. I didn't. It was like, like I was just like, get away from me, man. It was a... Yeah, it's a problem. Yeah, it was. I moved away though, so uh, I don't have that cat problem anymore. But that and that was uh, that was another lifetime. Well, I'm glad to hear you were able to solve this situation. Yeah, I mean, I just ended up having to move out. He he's living his life. I'm living mine. You so want he, he has his own out? separate uh, apartment away from you. When's the last time you got in contact with the cat? Uh, not since I moved, man. Like, it's just been, we've just been, uh, we've won our separate ways. Well, Mr. Big, I, I'm happy to hear that you were able to uh, get yourself out of this relationship that was unfulfilling to you. Yeah, thank you. It was a pretty abusive one. I'm really glad I'm out of it. Have a good night, Mr. Big. You too, man. Have a good one. All from Lito. Lido. Oh, hey there, Lyle. How's it going? This is, this is fucking pizza shop. I don't know if this is doxing me, but who cares? Uh, this is pizza shop I used to go to called Lido's Pizza. It's delicious, man. You just made me think of it. I'm not oh, it's like me right without now, an M. But... What, say that one more time? Me without an M. <sighs> what year were you born, Lido? Uh, 1979. 1979. The 70s. What, were the, what was the end of the 70s like? I know you were just a baby, but what do you remember from that time? <laughs> I, re I remember actually uh, my uncle yelling at me in the crib one time. 
to really? shut up. You're, like, like you genuinely remember that? You, you remember I, that from when you were maybe I made it up? Who knows? But I do have a memory of that. Yeah. Do you remember, even faintly, even if you think this is something you made up? Do you remember why he was yelling at you? To shut up, because I was crying in the crib. That's straightforward. Did you end up shutting up? I think I did. I think I was like scared and I shut up. He was a really nice guy though, actually. But he just, yeah, he yelled at me. Yeah, babies suck. You definitely, sh- you you were definitely in the wrong in that situation. I, I've I've sided with your uncle. Um, me too. Have you I been am confused, Lita? Yeah. Um, my partner and I, on like a fourth date or something, we did uh, some mushrooms and uh, went for a walk and stuff and then came back and there was some plenty frozen yogurt and we're like, yeah, it's that frozen yogurt. And we couldn't get the lid open. And I was like, all right, like I know, like we're pretty high, you know, I should be confused if I can't open this right now because we're pretty high. But we tried forever, and we we ended up sawing it open with like a little saw, and I was like scared of being so high that I didn't want to hurt myself. So we got these thick like you know oven mitts and stuff, and uh, and then we were like so confused like why we couldn't get it open, and we searched online, and there was this plenty frozen yogurt thing where they messed up the lids on a whole batch, and uh, that's and, why we couldn't get that, it open. And uh, that article that you're reading about it. Uh, did they recommend that you use a saw to open them? And that we started busting up laughing because we used well, someone used like a um, in the article they were talking about how people were like using crazy means to get into their frozen or not no, gelato. Oh wow! So and uh, yeah, no, no. There's actually an article if you search for Talenti lid shut or whatever like we did the same thing we totally hacked it open and there's and then there was an article about it and then with that ended our confusion so you ended up getting okay was it a was it a hand saw or, or did you fucking run this under like an electric saw no it was a hand saw a hand saw okay jesus i was about to say that that would freak me the fuck out um <laughs> um okay so you eventually got it open we got it open thought it open but i was like man i should be manlier than this i should be able to open open the jars and the lids and shit uh but it was a factory error when you were in your garage shifting through your tool shed trying to find a saw to open your yogurt did you at any point think maybe i will eat something else I was on a one-track mind. I don't know. I, the only thing I was thinking of is I was going to hurt myself, so I started looking for gloves and shit, too. Mm. Whoa, did you take the lead on this project? Was your girlfriend of any help? What, what were the roles assigned? You were in charge of actually sawing the thing. Did she provide any emotional support while you were doing this? Yeah, I think she took a video while I was doing it. Mm. This is a girl you've only been on four dates with. Yeah, yeah. It was a pretty fun date. Okay, how's it going now? Uh, Good. It's like three and a half years later. Things are great. Three and a half years later? Yeah. Beautiful. Yeah, that's um, it's lovely. Wow, that, yog- that yogurt. You know, I feel like that's the butterfly effect right there, right? Some dude in a factory somewhere fucks up and now you're married. <laughs> exactly. Well, thank you for sharing that with us, man. I appreciate you. All right. Yeah, you have a great night. You too. All right. Call from Donnie Webb. Donnie Webb? <laughs> yeah. Why are you laughing? Because it's a good name, I think. You're laughing at your own name that you had me say. Yeah. Yeah. What what what's oh my so funny about this name? Well it's something that just came to my Do you even know? Head. No, because it I there's no origin story. It just came to my head. 
What are you ashamed of, Donny Webb? There's a few things that have lingered from my childhood that I, I, I would be ashamed of. Tell me one of these things. Um, well, I can't do a cartwheel or a handstand. How old are you? 20. Have you, is that still important to you? The ability to do a cartwheel or a handstand? A cartwheel, yes. A handstand, no. Why is it so important that you are able to do a cartwheel at 20? Because, um, well, I kind of just want the choreography aspect of it. I want that to be a skill under my belt. It's a pride thing for you. Oh, yeah. I, I, I would encourage you to think about this because, you know, the ability to do a cartwheel, right? Like, do you person like when you look out at other people? Do you find their ability to do cartwheels impressive? Because what I'm wondering about for you is this this sense of pride that you receive from, you know, the ability to do a cartwheel, the value that you place on your ability to do a cartwheel. Does it come from you? Are you the one that truly believes that the ability to do a cartwheel is impressive and valuable? Or is this a belief that you have gained from other people who have set their expectations of whether or not someone should be able to do a cartwheel upon you and you've absorbed them without stopping to think if you actually value the skill intrinsically as opposed to you value the skill because other people do I think I am jealous that I well as as a kid, when I was growing up, my friends can make up dances and include cartwheels in their dances for the talent show, but I couldn't be a part of that. There had to be some sort of modification for me. Donnie Webb, you gotta let it go. Donnie Webb. Oh, Look, what God. you lack in cartwheels, I'm sure you make up for other things. And I would rather see you uh, build the skills that are important to you as opposed to, you know, live in the past and try to make up for not having known how to do a cartwheel because yeah. look, I think you and I both know that the ability to do a cartwheel at 20 years old is not that important in fact, actually, I, I don't think it's that important at any age, unless if you're an acrobat which you haven't mentioned to me that you are no Donnie Webb, I would, I, I, I'll leave you with this, Donnie Webb. I think that you should find a new skill, the one that you picked for yourself, not that you know a bunch of other sixth grade girls from your past picked for you. <laughs> oh my gosh! Okay. Thank you for sharing, Donnie Webb. Thank you, Gek. Anytime. Good night. Good the night. name is kind of funny. I, right. <laughs> Call from Nick. Nick. Hello? Nick, can you hear me? Is this the therapy gecko? Nick, how much money do you make a year? Not a lot, man. Like the actual dollar amount? Uh, well, I live overseas, so it's not in dollars. <laughs> well, what currency is it in? Uh, it's, it's it's in yen. It's probably How much about. How money do you make a year in yen? Uh, uh, I want to say a little over three million yen. So you might not think that's a lot, but I have no idea how to convert yen to U.S. dollars, so I assume it's a lot. Uh, you just divide by a hundred, so it's like thirty thousand U.S. dollars. What are you ashamed of? A lot, a lot of stuff that I've that I've done. Let's focus on one thing. Focus on one thing. 
Um, I'm going to have to say my not reaching my academic potential. Why is reaching your academic potential important to you in the first place? Uh, because I know I could have I could have done better, so it's more of I didn't do the best that I could have with what I had. Right, I know that, but wh why does it even matter in the first place for you to do good at this? Mm -hmm. Because of all the time and resources that I, I put into it. I put in right. so much time and, and energy, and I, I just... I, I bombed, totally bombed. Right, but this ends up being kind of a uh, a cycle or something, right? Because you're putting in a bunch of time and effort to this thing that's important to you, but it's important to you because you're putting a bunch of time and effort into it. And at no point in the cycle do you stop and truly think about why academic success is important to you. It just goes mm. in that cycle. Yeah, well, I, it's it's kind of uh, behind me now. I've already I've already graduated and everything. There's nothing I can do about it. So um, it's good. kind of a situation where I uh, uh, I'm ashamed and there's nothing that I can do about it. So I'm not sure how to move on from that. Uh, graduated high school or college? College. Oh. Well, why are you still ashamed of? If it's behind you, does it affect you? Mm -hmm. In any way, shape, or form in your day-to-day -day life? Uh, I think so. I, maybe I could have had a better job if I did better. Like, I see uh, see my girlfriend. She's got, like, all these... She, she had, like, a perfect grades, and she went to this prestigious college and all that stuff, and she has a way better job than I do. And I, I feel kind of envious a little bit, and I feel like maybe if I had done better, if I studied more, if I'd buckled down, I'd be in kind of a similar position, but I'm not... What criteria do you use to judge a job as good? Mm, a lot. Uh, so first off, she makes a lot more money than I do, which, so, you know, good for her. She, she deserves the job. Um, right. But she's also way happier at the job. And it's mm -hmm. something that I could do, and it, it would be a perfect fit for me with my skills, but I didn't get to get it. We See, we actually applied for the same job, and she got it, but I didn't, and it's because she deserves it way more than I did. Are you primarily like like this um how do i put this like a good job is that primarily to you driven by how much money you would make i wouldn't say so i would say i mean it's it's certainly part of it you know being able to pay the bills um but i would say you know having an impact on people is probably the most important thing Beautiful. and i feel like right. in the hold job on, that on, she has i want to stop hold on, i want to stop i want to stop you i'm sorry to interrupt you but i think and again, I'm an insane man on the internet in a gecko costume. I have no idea what I'm doing. So don't take anything I say seriously ever. But right there, you saying I want to impact people? Mm -hmm. Focus on that. I, fuck your, who gives a fuck what grades you got in college? It, I, like, I, I so mean that so much. Like, who, I don't give a fuck what grades you got in college. If what you want to do is have an impact on people, there are eight trillion ways for you to do that that have nothing to do with how what kind of grades you got in college so just focus on that like as a general mm. direction i want to have an impact on people and uh, you know maybe you're like narrow-mindedly only focusing on the ways in which you could achieve that goal that involve you needing to have good grades and needing people to like look at you on a piece of paper and say yes or no and i would widen that focus into uh, uh, other opportunities in which your grades do not matter and i will tell you even though i am an insane man and a gecko costume that has no idea what they are doing uh, those ways exist so i would look for those as opposed to the ones that require you to have good grades in college because i think that that's bullshit. so just focus upon yeah. I want to have an impact on people. How can I do that? Not how can't I do yeah, that. Yeah, listen, man. You're no, you're no more insane than the rest of us. But uh, I appreciate but, um, that you uh, take you took the time out to, to talk to me. And I, 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 I hear what you're saying. Yeah. Of course, man. What would you say your name was one more time? Nick. Thank you, Nick. Uh, I, I wish you good luck, man. All right. Take it easy, brother. Of course. Call from Jackie. 
Jackie, are you there? Jackie. No, you're kidding. This is a joke. What? This is what a joke. <laughs> oh, literally. Hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up. You actually answered me. I'm watching stream. I did. What's up? I did. Don't watch the stream. Turn the stream off. There's no stream. I'm not streaming right now. You are on the phone <laughs> with a gecko. You are alone in your room. I am alone okay. in my room. We're both going insane right now. And we're going to be in this experience together. Because, look, Jackie, can I be honest with you right now? Yeah, I, yeah. Go a ahead. lot of people don't realize this, Jackie, but I need you right now just as much <laughs> as you may think you need me. <laughs> okay. So for me to be there for you, I need you to meet me with my needs. So, Yo. so, so be, so be with me in this moment and I'll be with you. Okay. Okay. Gog. Okay. I'm here. I'm, I'm seeing my name in chat. It's kind of weird. Kind of weird. Don't, kind of weird. don't read chat. There is no chat. Okay. I don't know okay. No, there's no chat. There's no chat. No, no chat. When you're no. on the phone with your mom, <laughs> okay. do you read chat? No, no, I don't read no. chat. What's chat? What is chat? What what's, what's Twitch? Jackie? What am I ashamed of? All right. All right. I'm ashamed. I'm ashamed of fucking up. You know what I mean? I'm ashamed of messing up. What's the last thing you fucked up? Um, something at work. So like, I'm trying, I'm trying to move up in like a higher position at my job, and I, I kind of fucked up in an interview, and I just, you know, I don't want to like have that be my portrayal towards like. Mm the the bigger bosses you know what i mean yeah do you care to, do you care to share what it is you fucked up um well i think it's just like my anxiety during, like like so so the whole thing is like i'm great at what i do like i and i, and I know i am and i'm really confident but when it's like a one-on-one -on -one, like confrontational like i feel like i'm being stared down you know what i mean it's like my anxiety kicks in and i feel like i'm being tested and jackie if you could i Let's get logistical here. What okay. specifically, what event transpired? Because now, because to me, I'm like the fact that like you're, you're, uh, no, I mean, no, I'm actually, I'm kind of being serious right now. To me, the fact that you, ha you didn't respond with like an actual event of a thing that you like logistically, I fucking jammed the copier. I <laughs> fucked up my PowerPoint slide. The fact that you haven't given me an in real world thing that you fucked up is kind of making me believe that the fact that you fucked up might be in your head because okay. well, it's just understandable. But okay. I, I don't know. I, maybe I spoke too soon. Did, did, is there a real life event thing that you did? Um, Probably not recently. No, no. So that yeah, might just be in your head. head. Yo, you know what? You solved my problem. That's it. You solved it. I get it. I, I think I fucked up all the time. It, it could okay. just be in your head. And I, but that's a good thing. That means you didn't fuck up. And yeah. By the way, even if you didn't fuck up, who cares? Fuck all those people. They're <laughs> all going to die just like you are and me. It's, it's, hard, it's hard to, like, bring yourself to that understanding and be that, like, introspective about it yourself. Is. 100%. You know? Mm -hmm. Like sometimes, sometimes I look in the mirror and honestly, like I don't even recognize what I look like. Like, does that make any sense to you? Yes. Yes. Like, like I, I know what I look like, but I don't perceive myself physically. Like I'm perceiving myself everything like mentally, like what's going on, like what I'm thinking, what I'm doing. Can I bring to this something that I've been noticing recently, and I I think it might be related or tied. I I think this is related or tied into what you're trying to tell me. Lately, okay. like while I'm doing this stream, yeah, I'll in my head I'll think that like a response I've given or like a way that I've uh, conducted myself. Uh, was one way or came off one way and then I'll go back and I'll watch the VOD and I'll be like oh they actually like I when I actually I watch myself do it as opposed to experiencing it as myself I'm like yeah oh, that, actu that actually wasn't that bad that actually was nowhere near as bad as I thought it was gonna be or as I thought it was um so and that's kind of keying me in. that experience of, of I'm doing this right now and then it looks different it's I, I go back and I watch it as a viewer as opposed to me doing it keys me into more that idea that the way that we think we're coming off is different from how we actually are that that definitely makes sense no I yeah. totally understand that um and to, to that point what did you say your name was 
uh, Jackie. It's Jackie. Jackie. To that point, it, uh, it's also keyed me into how easy it is to fool people. Okay. So Jackie, all you have to do to not come off, to not make people think that you fucked up, is just fully in your head believe that you did not fuck up, and then you will act as if you did not fuck up, and then everyone will accept you as not having fucked up. You're so right. You're really right. It's it's a whole like validation thing. Like you have to validate yourself. Absolutely. Uh, how was your bladder doing, by the way? Like like you you got to pee really bad. No, because I'm I, I'm I think that uh you know be I'm focused in on what I'm doing right now. Um, so I, I haven't draw my attention has been drawn away from my bladder. But I, I appreciate you checking in, Jackie. And yeah, th thank yeah. Thank you for sharing, Jackie. I, I appreciate you. Of course, I'm, I'm glad to be on, on, on stream. Wait, what's the stream? What's the stream? Let's chat. Okay. I'm glad to be here, you know? <sighs> I appreciate you, Jackie. Have a good night. <laughs> Have a good night, Gig. Call from Emily. Emily! Hello? Emily! Hi. Hello? Emily! Yes. Hi. What's up? What's up? Oh wait, Emily. Did you? Did we talk on? Did we talk on Monday? Or uh, wait, no, we talked? We talked on Wednesday, Emily. Uh, no, that that wasn't me. <laughs> that wasn't you. That was a different Emily. Uh, I guess. Yeah, I wasn't. I wasn't watching on Wednesday. Have we ever spoken before? No, this is my first time calling. Actually. Tell me everything about you, Emily. Um. Uh. Okay. Um. I'm 25. Um, I work in New York City, um, and yeah, not really an exciting life right now during COVID times, but I appreciate you picking up my call. Oh, of course. Um, what, what is life like in New York City right now? It's really weird, actually, you know, like, it's, it's just so quiet and dead, honestly. Not many people, a lot of people left the city, so it's not really bustling right now, but yeah. I've heard... There's a bit of a controversy going on where New Yorkers, uh, you know, the 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 gatekeepy sort of real New Yorkers are, uh, you know, making fun of all the people that left the city. Is that a sentiment that you um, have experienced out in the wild? I mean, I'm not originally from New York City, so I don't know if I necessarily resonate with that, but I do I do see it a little bit, I guess. Emily, I have a question for you. Yeah. Have you ever been confused? Um, yeah, yeah. I'm, I think I'm actually going through something right now that's kind of a bit confusing, I guess you would say. A bit confusing, you say? Yeah, I mean, it's it's like, you know, like a personal situation, like roommate situation. So you're probably tired of hearing about these, but like... No, please don't. I don't know if I'm. I don't know if I'm being like paranoid about something or if something's actually happening in my apartment. But yes. I'm trying to. I'm trying to figure it out. But it's it's definitely very confusing for me. What are the details? What what, what have you? Uh, what's what's the intel on the situation as it stands? Yeah, I mean, like, I've been feeling some tension with my roommates. I live with three other girls, um, and I've been feeling like they kind of want me out because we have to sign our lease for next year soon um mm. and i kind of feel like they're ganging up against me and trying to make things really uncomfortable for me so i want to leave um and the part where i'm i can't tell if i'm paranoid or not is that the past few weeks slash this past month where i've been really feeling this tension and like isolation i've had like three allergic reactions where I've had to go to the hospital and my roommates know what I'm deathly allergic to. They know I cannot eat peanuts and somehow I just keep getting anaphylaxis and ending up in the hospital. And I don't know if I'm being paranoid, but like, I think it's weird that they're trying to nudge me out of the apartment and make sure I'm not living with them next year. And there's all these coincidences of there being traces of peanuts in my food and me ending up in the hospital and ending up having to pay these obscene hospital bills, you know? And I just, there's been a few scenarios where I thought I caught them and I just, I can't figure it out. And I don't know if I'm hallucinating or being paranoid, but it's just so confusing and I don't know what to do about it. Wow. That would be 
massively fucked up if they were doing that. Right? Which is why it's such a big accusation to point at them, and I, I just don't know what to do anymore. It is. It's a heavy accusation to point at them, but... Hmm... What I, I'm curious, I know you say it's like paranoia, and yeah. Do you do you have any like? What uh, could you go any further into what you believe? Uh, your evidence would be, or sort of the root of your. What uh, this I'm I'm these are fancy ways for me to ask. Why do you think they're doing this, or what makes you think they're doing this? Um, I mean, there were like a few scenarios, but like I, one where I really thought I got them was two weeks ago. I was making a smoothie in the kitchen because we just got a Nutribullet and it's like my favorite thing ever. But like mm -hmm. I also had just ordered food for later in the day. Um, so I was like mid smoothie making, but I ran downstairs to go pick up my um, my Uber Eats order. You um, have to vulnerable and, smoothie out in the open. Yeah. Yeah. And then, you know, Ooh. I came back, continued you know, cooking up my smoothie. And uh, when I had it, I was like, fuck, like my mouth is tingling. Like, I think I'm going through anaphylaxis. And there was, there's literally nothing I could have put in the smoothie to make it. Why would I poison myself? You know, um, you so, double checked uh, everything. Like, you didn't, you didn't go to Trader Joe's and get a new f fucking xanthan gum thing or no. you, all the ingredients are tried, tested, true. Nothing possibly could have gotten in there under your watch. Yeah, definitely no. And I know that one of my roommates was home during the time. So I feel like maybe she might have slipped something into my smoothie. I, I really don't know. But it's, it's just it's just too weird, the timing, you know? Wow. Hmm. I mean, what is your person? What, what have your like relationships been like with these? Like, how do they act towards you? Is it is it conniving or strange or? Just very like cold and tense lately like they want to make it uncomfortable so i don't want to live here anymore but like it's such a good location and such a good rent and no, like no 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 I, no look you know look, no 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 look look even if even if and we don't know if they're poison if they're trying to poison you or not but the fact that you're paranoid that they even would the fact that your relationship with them is such that the idea that they would purposely try to poison you and send you into afterlife shot the fact that your relationship with them is such that that idea even could enter your head means that you should not be living with these people but like why should even I if it's such a great location leave? even if you feel like leaving would make it feel like they won or got rid of you and you don't want that you should leave but that's like surrendering, you know. Like no, I yeah, I know that's what you're. Go through you, no, surre surrender, and... surrender. It's, 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 it's a, a lot of. I, there's no reason to keep yourself in a poor situation just because you wanna you wanna win. Because what you really win is absolute. You, the prize is that you get to live in fear. It's not a great prize. But like, but like so I would. Me I think I think surrendering is not a terrible option. But like, hear me out. Like, what if I got back at them somehow and Don't. then made them all leave? That's w too much work for you. Are you sure? Like, what would Positive. you do if you were in the situation? I, you I told fight you what back? I would do. I would leave. Getting revenge. You, like you have nothing to win by getting revenge or by staying. Whether or not yeah. these people did it, poisoned you, doesn't matter because... Like I said, the fact that they would even enter your brain that they would means that your relationship with them is, is kind of fucked up and weird. Which means you should just leave. Don't try to get back at them. Don't try to... Let them win. Just leave. But, that's that's, that's, what, that's uh, what I would do if I were in your situation. But it's like, I even tried to, like, sit them down once. And I was like, guys, like... Like, I, like, brought them I was like, Chloe, Sarah, Emily, like, come here. Like, we need to talk about this. And they completely just denied it all. And told me I was crazy. Let them. Uh, 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 what's your name? Was whose name? My roommates. No, your. Oh, your name is Emily. Emily, um, let your roommates win this stupid battle and move on with your life. That that that's my final words to you. Okay. Um, 
but uh you know i appreciate you calling in and um thank you for sharing i hope that i hope that you're all right i hope that you didn't you're not uh you know they didn't you, you don't have peanut lung or i just made that up but <laughs> um you know th t please 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 listen to me don't fucking go on a revenge crusade it's not gonna help you don't try to win don't play this game just leave just what I think. I, I, know, I don't like to give people actual... Like, but that I do to leave. Don't play these games. They're stupid. Don't try to win. Because you don't win anything. You win... Emily, you win further talking? stress. I'm, oh, I'm, I'm talking to my, my mom right now. Alright. I thought I heard my name. No, I, I didn't say your name, Chloe. I, I, I was just talking to my mom. It's good. Alright, I'll talk sorry, to you sorry soon. Sorry about that. No, no All worries. Right, Tell bye. your mom I said hello. Okay, hold on. I'm... Okay, the people in the chat saying... Fa First of all, alright. Here's another thing, if you're new to this stream. My view on fake calls is that it doesn't fucking matter. What? People, someone could call in with something that's clearly fake. Who fucking cares? All from... Uh... To accept, press... <sighs> What confused you about the call screening process? What? You're still confused. Um... Still confused? Yeah. What can I clear up for you? What? Uh, what you said at first, I didn't hear you. Uh, said at first, like, when you first answered, or when Google Voice asked you to state your name and you said, uh... <laughs> uh, when I first answered. And do you want me to catch you up to where we words. you we, we can go two ways with this. I could I we could, this because I think what we're engaging in right now is kind of bullshit. Uh, but it is also, you know, I take full responsibility for it because this is the line that I decided to take us down. We, we could either continue sure. down this path of sort of going in circles, not really knowing what we're talking about. Me. Uh, uh, railing on you for being confused and then that confusing you even more because you don't know what's going on. Or we could just start completely fresh as if we're two people having a conversation with each other like normal human beings. Which of those two options would you like to go down? Because I'm open to either. Alright. Uh, door two. What are you looking at? Uh, my Roomba uh, running around my house. When did you get a Roomba? How long have you had it for? Well, I uh, I got it for graduating college, so I guess that's like three years now. You know, it took Roombas, a little bit longer than most people, but it happened. Can I ask you something and, and it might be a little bit personal? Yeah, sure. Do you feel as though you have developed any sort of i'm not going to say strong but perhaps above average emotional connection with your roomba after having had it for so long and identifying it you know possibly as a sentient object you know i i would say um definitely yes um but uh at the same time, I also, I don't have a name for Roomba yet. It's still just Roomba. But, I mean, I look at, I look at Roomba and, like, I get, like, th this, like, little, little happy feeling when I see him running around and bumping into walls and going into crevices and getting confused and the little happy noises he makes. So, yeah, definitely, uh. I don't think I've ever been so attached to a vacuum before. And how do you think that Roomba views you? Mm, I don't know. Is it fucked up that I've never thought about that? Am I allowed to curse? Is this like a family channel? You can say whatever you want to me. You can say cunt if okay. you want. I would never. Um, but yeah, I guess I was like not taken into consideration so much how Roomba views me. I hope it's not like a, a like 
a master sort of position. Like I want to be like a almost like a colleague of Roomba, but at the same time, I'm giving right. Roomba commands. Interesting. Don't know. Do you would you rather be feared or loved by your Roomba? Hmm. What is it? What? I think that was Machiavelli, right? Is that his name? Yeah, Machiavelli. Machiavelli. Uh, yeah. Um, in the case of Roomba, I would I would say loved. Um, you know, just like I, f I feel like fostering a relationship with Roomba is important because, like, you know. I love Roomba. I want Roomba to love me and not feel like I'm subjugating Roomba. And, uh, like, otherwise, like, what if Roomba decides to, like, turn on me or something, you know? Like, if Roomba doesn't love me, what is stopping Roomba for doing that, you know? Like, what if Roomba decides not to vacuum? You know, uh, you've been very vulnerable with us over the course of this column. And I want to end this by saying I think that you should tell everything that you've told us to Roomba and see how they respond. And maybe you can develop a greater relationship than the one you've had right now because it doesn't sound like the relationship between you and Roomba has a lot of communication going on. So I would go, a lot, go ahead and start that dialogue as soon as you possibly can before uh, Roomba fears you in uh, an irreversible way. Damn. All right. Uh, I'll do that. Thank you. Anytime. I'll talk to you soon. All right. Bye. Call from S to accept S. Yes. Hello. Uh, how are you doing, S? Uh, doing pretty well. Not the most uh, productive day, but I found your uh, stream pretty interesting. Well, what did you want to get done? Uh, well, uh, I uh, I anticipated to have work today, but uh, my boss never messaged me. So honestly, I just uh, sat in all day just on the laptop. What What did you do on the laptop? I was just playing games. Uh, I wanted to work out, but uh. I just got too into it. So I was just really criticizing myself. And then the last 40 minutes, I've just been watching your stream. I've been streaming for 40 minutes? Yeah, like 36. Yeah. Why you don't like it? No, I, I, it's actually, I feel like, uh, no, I'm in a more, I'm learning more how to, um, how to get uh, so much of how so much of my experience with the stream is about my energy levels and i'm learning how to best prime my energy levels to you know get into and i think when i have high energy it goes by quicker anyway that's it's, it's not it's not about me nothing is about me no one ever owes me anything ever no one ever owes you anything ever s what have you ever been confused mm. uh yeah definitely most good amount of times Tell me about the last time you were confused. Uh, I, w I don't want to tell you. Uh, I mean, the last time I was confused, it's pretty a boring story, but I'll give you a, an interesting story. Sure. Um, so uh, uh, around when I was 10, I'll give you a, I'll keep it quick. Uh, around when <laughs> I was 10, uh, I'm Mongolian, right? So uh, around when I was 10, when I went to my cousin's place, all my family was there. And I started noticing one by one, they all started going upstairs, right? And uh, I go upstairs just to see what's happening, where my family is. And I noticed that they're all in the room on their knees. And they're just, uh, they're circling my cousin, right? And my cousin comes out in this wardrobe. And he's wearing this cultural, uh, cultural outfit. And he's doing a little... How do I say it? Like a little dance or some almost. And uh, my aunt, my cousin gives him a tea. And uh, my cousin sounds like me, right? My voice may be a little deeper, but uh, after he did all that, he uh, his voice became grisly, you know, something, you know, almost scary, ominous, sort of, right? I, I got I got too freaked out and I left. 
I left. And five years, four years later, I don't talk about this. And I tell my cousin, you know, what happened? What was that? What happened to, you know, let's a cousin Bill. And uh, she told me, she, he's a shaman, right? And she told me, he's a shaman. And shamans are people who connect our ancestors, you know, with to the family almost. And so I, I asked, so our ancestor went into him. He got possessed. That's what, I, that's what I said to her. And she said, it's not a possession. It's more of an invitation, right? And she said, and I, I started understanding. And I was almost, I was, I didn't believe it at first, you know? And I asked, like, you get, like, come on there. Like, I think this is like, you know, this is bull crap, right? I don't think it's real. And then she's telling me, well, she told me a story where when she was pregnant, she got into a car crash. And, you know, she almost, she, she could have died. But uh, a week after the car crash, um, she was all right. Uh, they did another ritual with my cousin again. And an ancestor came into him. And she said, like, she asked our ancestor, like, what happened? Why am I alive? And, you know, like. So this was a ritual to possess your cousin with your not ancestor. Not a possession. Not a possession. Remember. Not a possession. It's it's a, a, an it's invitation. A yes, invitation. Okay, so so they were performing a ritual to invite your ancestor into the body of your cousin for the purpose of asking your Question. grandmother for the purpose of asking questions. But why? Yes. But even but even if why would your ancestor know the answer to why That's, your grandma got into a car crash? See, I was gonna get to that point. I was gonna get to that point, right? Okay, I'm so sorry. I'll let you ask finish. my cousin. No, 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 th no, thank, thank you for bringing that up. So, I asked my cousin, do, do our ancestors have the answer to everything? And she said, yes, yes, they do. And I was like, and you know, as a Mongolian, I asked, you know, are we related to Genghis Khan, Chinggis Khan? And she said, no. And so that, I was like, okay, so they had the answer to everything. I was like, can you ask, can you ask our ancestors what happened, what's, what's, you know, what's in our future? You know, what's ahead, what awaits us? You know, am I going to... Am I going to be a failure? Am I going to be successful? I want to know. And she said, well, what's the point of asking them? Because if you ask them that and they give you the answer, then they you you wouldn't be living life. You'd just be expecting something. And exactly. You, exactly, right? And yes. that's why, that that's and back to what you said, you know, what if they don't have the answer? What if they're just making it up? Almost as like a false hope. Uh, so it, that's why it's kind of confusing, and not just that. I, I told. Did, wait, did you end up my, asking why why your grandma got into a car crash? Yeah, not my grandma, my cousin. Oh yeah. Why, yeah. why so, did you? So uh, no, she asked, who got into she a car asked, crash? I'm confused. There's too many elements cousin, to the story. Sorry about did you find out why your cousin got into a car crash? Um, uh, supposedly she told me. Uh, she said, "Like, why am I alive? What happened?" Like, and my ancestor. Uh, this was a while ago, but. If what I remember was my, she said my ancestor said that she was pregnant and she she had to give birth to uh, to the baby in her. So it's pretty crazy. Mm. But yes, so that's why I thought mm. so. It's, that's why I'm a little confused on whether you know whether it's all true or not. Especially because my best friend's dad, I told him this story and he doesn't believe it. You know, but. That's, what is your cousin? Like, what is what is when you when you talk to your cousin about this? How have you asked your cousin to describe the physical experience of uh, inviting his ancestor into his body? To be honest, I've never, I've never had the guts to ask him. I, I think it's too personal. I wouldn't want to ask him like, how does it feel, or like, is it true? Are you lying to the family? You know, I don't whatnot. think you, I don't think you're you're you know approaching it. I, I don't think you are intending to approach it as an interrogation to uh, uh, to figure out the truth. But you know, more of um. I kind of I kind of I, I kind of don't want to do it like, out of respect, you know, because he's so much older than me, you know. Sure. I I'm getting the sense that that's uh, you know, sort of a, you know, a, a thing respecting those who are who are older than you and their traditions. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you for sharing that with us. That was pretty interesting.
Yeah, most definitely. What's the? Do you know? Do you know at least the name, or uh, if it has one, of this ceremony? Uh, the ceremony. Yes. Uh, what it is I'm, called? I'm not too knowledgeable, knowledgeable about it, but I know uh, my cousin is a shaman. Shaman. Uh, maybe there is more terms to it, other than, but that's all I know. You know. He's a shaman, though. Well, S, you said your name is S? Yeah, yeah, S. Well, thank you for sharing that. That was very interesting. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, I hope you, I hope you have, I hope you, I hope you get those answers, or, or maybe one day figure them out for yourself. You Who knows, be inviting, you know? You know, ghosts into your body and shit. <laughs> Not ghosts. But, uh, hold on, yeah, maybe I will find it, maybe I'll, uh, maybe I'll, I'll, you know, get the guts, you know, to ask my cousin about all this. Power to you, man. I wish you the best of luck. Yeah, man. Thank you. Of course. Anytime, Ask. Talk to you soon. Yeah, you too. You know, he's he is brave. I'm not letting ghosts anywhere into my body. I don't care if it is my grandma. She can have the dog. We'll give her the dog. She can go into the dog and we'll ask her questions. And that'll be kind of cool because then, then the dog, then we'll get the dog to talk and that would be, that'll be funny. We'll have a talking dog who's my grandma. That's comical. Call from Rose. I got it. Rose. Don't freak out. Don't freak out. Hi. How are you, Rose? I'm really well. How are you? You're really well? Yeah. Like, Why really so well? well. You're because like, I called oh, so you're like not. Times last week and you didn't pick up the phone. Because you called how many times? 300 times. But, but I here's the thing, and I tell this to everyone. You don't, So you're mainly well because of the fact that you got onto the stream tonight. Yeah, like I have something really serious to talk about. And I'm you're, trying to be able to talk to you about it. But, uh, but you should know, you're vesting too much of your own happiness upon me. You're, you're, you're sort of giving up your um, ownership over the direction of your happiness to me, you know, because I don't, I don't want to be, I, I should, there, I shouldn't be, you know, how, how do I put this? Um, you know, your happiness shouldn't rest upon me answering your calls. You shouldn't care about me at all in, in regards but to your own green, happiness, Rose. That makes me happy. Well, thank you. That's very sweet of you to say. What did you want to talk about? So I'm in this discord with like a bunch of really like old friends. And, like, we really like each other, and, like, we're really close. But there's this, like, one person who just constantly brings up drama. His name is Cameron, by the way. Like, I have to just vent it out. And he's always, like, inciting drama and, like, bringing up people's insecurities. And, like, I don't know how to be mean because, like, I'm a cancer, and I feel like I'd end up just crying for them if they, like, end up disappearing. But it's just so irritating when... I want to be in a safe space with like my friends and I can't because Cameron comes in and like throws all his problems on us. And then he's just like, yeah, Andrew, you're like so boring. So like, I don't really know what to do. And I don't know why I feel like this. Are you saying uh, I, I'm, I'm curious. I'm trying to understand uh, Cameron's behavior. You're saying that they, uh, uh, like throw their problems out to everyone and they're burdening you with their problems or they are shitting on everyone and calling them all, uh, you know, bad names and telling them that they suck? Both. He's like the definition of, and you know what, I'm not going to curse a, you know, a a hole. You can say whatever, yeah. you can say, asshole. you can say asshole. He's the of an asshole. You can say I I you you can't you can't say cocksucker because TikTok okay, is listening to ban me for gang okay. You can say it, I can't say it. But um Cocksucker. Oh sorry, wait, okay, wait, 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 wait. Can I say that? Yeah, you can I just can't say it because okay. then I'll get banned. Okay. Right, but you cool. can say it. Okay, great. Anyway. Alright. How did you be how do you, what is your what is your personal relationship with Cameron as opposed to the, the sort of group dynamic? Well, like we have a connection with like playing Overwatch because like, as I mentioned, I'm a cancer, so that also means, like, I'm a really toxic person. 
when it comes to like venting out like my anger. So we play okay. Overwatch. Can, can I can I take can I take a detour here real quick? Mm-hmm. Go ahead. And maybe you'd be a good person. You seem you know like a, like a person who who I could have this conversation with. Mm-hmm. I'm I, I've thought about this before, and I'm not here. T- this is not like a dig at astrology. And this is not like to make fun of astrology. This is not to like shit on people who like it. But I, I have a, I have a bit of a problem with it. And I, I actually okay, am curious ahead. about your perspective on this. Mm-hmm. I believe, especially, I, I think it's a little dangerous. And I, again, I, th- I'm just curious about this. I'm not here to make like state. This is not a statement. I'm just exploring this to me. Mm-hmm. To me, the idea of astrology, especially like for young people. I know that like you know, you know, younger younger people on like TikTok are getting into it. Mm-hmm. My problem with it is that when you like define yourself and label yourself mm-hmm. so early, especially so early in life, you know, when you're when you say when you say things like I'm a cancer, so that means I'm toxic. I feel like it predisposes you to okay, I believe I am a cancer. Therefore, I think about being a cancer and then, you know, I mean, therefore I think about being toxic and then that in turn makes you act more toxic Mm -hmm. does that make like i I think i think that that sort of labeling is dangerous especially for younger people because what if you don't want to be toxic but like you have this Mm -hmm. uh, thing in your head of like i'm a cancer so i must be toxic isn't that what do you think about that you're 100 percent right but maybe i should like reword it and say oh i was born in you know july and like i am toxic but it's not because i'm a cancer does that does is that better because like I feel like a lot of well uh, yeah my... but, but that's not but that's but that's not you had to like sort of take a double step to get there you started out with I am a cancer therefore I'm toxic so that to me indicates you know and again I'm trying therapy shit but that to me mm-hmm. makes me think that that's just sort of the 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 inherent programming of of your brain right now yeah well maybe like for example like I was saying I cry a lot like I'm that person you can't take to a sad movie or like talk about like a really serious topic because I start crying and like I don't know why and like every other cancer not you know I haven't met every cancer in the whole entire world but the cancers that I have met have the same issue where like they just are like compulsive criers they're like really into their feelings and that's what like you know these tiktokers talk about is like cancers are always like with a hoodie in their room crying like i don't know why i don't know it's like astrology is like this whole other issue because as you said it just predisposes like norms on people but i don't know it's weird that like there are a lot of things that certain signs do that they like repeat in different people it's strange um maybe it's just like right and i I, you know Okay, I, you know, hey, look, if it helps you and if you like it, then good. But I, it does so – something does sort of ring alarm bells to me of this sort of new, like, trend of people really heavily wanting to label themselves because it just feels dangerous to growth. Anyway, that's a yeah. – I won't do that again. I've been, tr- I've been trying to keep the that's call fine. short lately, but that's something I've just been thinking about a lot lately. That's fine, anyway. yeah. All right, Cameron. Yeah. Um – it's, it's, tell him, just don't be friends with him anymore. Don't play Overwatch with other, someone else. But like, what am I supposed to do with my like emotional attachment to him? And like, who am I supposed to scream at people on Overwatch with? Because nobody else wants to do it with me. Um, uh, why do you want to scream at people on Overwatch? Because like, for, like, I don't know if you play. Have you played Overwatch before? Chico? I have not played Overwatch. Well, like, it, I play a lot of competitive. So, you know, it's like a sp- supposed team game. But, like, people just end up, like, doing whatever they want in there. And, yes, it's like a video game, but it's like, I don't know. It's like watching football. Like, football is a game. And so when somebody does something that they shouldn't have done, but they did it just to kind of fuck around, you get angry. And I don't know. So, I don't know. Well, maybe you should work on your anger issues. Maybe, maybe I'm, maybe I'm the issue here. Well, you're, look, you could both be the issue, but you're the issue that's easier to control because you're you and he's him. Yeah, you're right. Well, but, uh, look, also don't take anything I say seriously ever. I have no idea what I'm doing up here, uh, but I appreciate you, Rose. 
Thank you for that's okay. That's thank okay. you for talking to me. Thank no, thank you for picking up. Thank you. Anytime. You have a good night. Okay. You too. Call from William. Billy. What's up, man? How you doing? What's up with you? What are you doing, dude? I'm playing some Minecraft right now. What's with the? Why is there? Yeah. We, it's, we're having a. We're, it's gamer. Ow! It's the gamer yeah, yeah. section of the. You know, night. I never thought I'd get in on your uh, show. I really, I really like it. Oh, thank you, dude. Uh, How'd you I've find out about it? I don't know. Oh, TikTok, TikTok. I watched one of your clips on TikTok. I was hooked. Um, Fuck yeah! It's really good. Thank you. Yeah. Um, how how long have you been doing this? Because I found out in like September, and I figured I was late to the game. But you know, I heard you. A lot of the times when people ask me how long I've been doing this, I do a bit and I tell them I've been doing it for ten years. But and I was about to do that, but you sound but you sound so so sweet. I don't want to, I don't want to, yeah. um, I don't want to troll you. I don't no, want to XD. I don't want to, um, you know, you know, XD got trolled. You. Right, right. I got a question. I'm mad, bro. I've been doing this since June. What's up? June? Okay, cool. You ever smoke weed? Um, why do you ask? Because you just seem like a really chill guy. You seem like uh, you 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 do either with a glass of wine or you know something. You hit you hit something before for this. No. Whether let me, it's here, a let, nap. I'm, here, I'm gonna explain my stance on uh, that um here, my problem here's my problem what'd you say your name was William my problem dude is that like yes I smoke weed but I, I'm not high right now I couldn't do this stream if I were high right now that would be a f nightmare for me I'm 100% stone cold sober I've been 100% stone cold sober for every single stream I've done I don't like uh, telling people like, but you know after the stream I'll, I'll you know I'll chill out you know if I want to just relax and get high cause dude getting high for me is like you know I'm just trying to relax and this is not relaxing yeah. at all This, I mean it is it yeah, is relaxing yeah, in a sense like chemical fumes in your in your nose and everything that that seems that doesn't seem comfortable you know? but what i mean look this is like you know it's a lie you know i gotta I, I i how do i put this smoking pot puts me in a puts me in my head makes me think makes me analyze uh -huh. you know um, i'm inside of myself and shit when i'm doing this i can't be inside of myself i can't be thinking about what i'm gonna say i just have to talk right I, and also i'm trying to pay yeah. attention to you i'm trying to talk to people i gotta navigate all this machinery and you know, try not to cut my hand off and shit. Um, yeah. So it's the whole th If I were high, that would be a nightmare. And another thing is, even if I'm a guy who says, like, who is... I don't, I don't want... Here's another thing. I don't want any of my personality traits whatsoever to be construed with, like... Like, I'm... Like, I would... It would upset me for weed... Or any other drug to um, take credit for any of my personality traits. Does that make sense? Like if I'm a fucking chill yeah, guy or I'm a fucking weird guy or I say stupid shit nah, or make yeah, noise I or whatever. That. That's all me. You know, that's not the we. I I'm doing that when I'm sober. I'm a guy who yeah. does, you know, whatever all this bullshit who also happens to at some points in time smoke weed. But I'm not letting the weed take credit for any of that other shit, if that makes sense. Yeah, you shouldn't. You shouldn't. It's all you. It's all natural. It's all therapy, Gecko, man. Have you ever been confused? Yeah, uh, a lot of times. Tell me about one of those times. Um, you know, uh, I came out to my best friend a couple of weeks ago. That was word. That was uh, interesting. Um, and he was cool with it. You know, it was nice. Rock and roll. Yeah, yeah. But, you know, uh, I think I've been confused my whole life. I don't know. Have you, um... Uh, and, you know, look, we don't have to get into this if it's too personal, but have you have you uh, uh, come out to anyone else? 
Um, not very many people. This is the first person that's, you know, lived near me. You know, nice. that's, that's it. You practice on people that don't, that aren't in your social circle. And then you go out and then you go to your social circle. Your social circle and then you, you know, you do all that. It's good. Well, good. I'm glad that, um, I'm glad that that, uh, that that worked out for you. Yeah. Yeah. And all this quarantine, man, it's just, you, you, you get inside your mind more. It's either you're distracted all the time or you just, you think. You just sit there. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. When you sit there and you think, what do you think? Well, I think, you know, I got schoolwork due. That, that's, an, that's, you know, that's um, one of those, uh, what do you call it, in, invasive thoughts. Intrusive you know, thoughts? Is, intrusive thoughts, yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah. It makes it shivers, you know. It makes you, um, makes you really nervous. That, I mean, that that's the only thing that contributes to anxiety that I have, you know what I'm saying? Is school? It's, yeah, it's a school. What, what do you study? Uh, I'm in high school, but I'm 18. Don't hang up. With oh, me. Okay. All right. No, uh, I believe you. But you know, I just. What do you what, well? What do you what do you want to go? What do you want to go to school for? Uh, cybersecurity or um, just like tech in general. It's good, good money, okay. and I'm really good at it. I think. Fuck with that. I like yeah. that. Yeah, dude. Yeah. Uh, no, school sucks. Um, I gotta tell, I, 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 I really, I'm not grateful enough that I, I, I should really be more grateful about the fact that I never have to go to school ever again. Going, school is all, if yeah, you're you in should, high school you and should. you can hear this, school is truly awful. If you're like, school is as awful as you think it is. Like, if you're thinking about like, oh, life will be better when you're out, it, it's you're correct. School is <laughs> appropriately rated as terrible. Yeah. I don't even get the good parts of it anymore. It's yeah, dude, cool. that, no, that sucks. No, I feel for you, dude. Because yeah. when I look back at high school, yeah, I feel you, man. Because when I look back at high school, um, you know, I do think fondly of like, you know, a lot of the, um, you know, my friends and shit like that. But uh, yeah, it sucks, it, man. Being I got it, being in high school right now in the pandemic, I feel for you, dude. I, I get you that that sucks. Um, I'm glad to hear that you're trying to make the most of it. Yeah, I mean, I got my driver's license last year in February, which, you know, sucked because I went out to the mall once and then everything terrible shut down. Um, but, you know, well, hey, dude, now you can just, you know, browse Amazon, get on, get on Zoom with your friends and just, you know, have go look at Amazon. Oh, shit. That's, 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 that's the that's the best you can do with that. You know, and I, I find out who my true friends are during this interesting in what way well you know you have acquaintances you see it you see people every single day you say hi to them you talk to them you interact with them but you yeah. they would never interact with you outside of the social setting that you were interacting with them sure. so you have work friends you have school friends you have all these people but it's just like i never i haven't seen these people so i felt like i've already graduated you know more or less. Yeah. More or less. Yeah. I don't um, know. It's just... Whole rap. Well, man, you know, make the most of it. I, I don't have any advice to give you. I'm here to give advice. I'm an insane man in a gecko costume. But, you know, I, I feel I feel your pain right now. I, yeah. I, I, feel, I, feel, I feel truly bad for, um, you know, kids in uh, high school right now. But... You know, it at, at least at least know that um, you are valid to think that uh, high school sucks, because it it really truly does. Yeah, yeah, it sucks ass. I'm allowed to swear. And right? if it's and if it doesn't suck, if it's incredible, that actually sucks even more even more. Because yeah, that like means you yeah, that means your life's gonna get worse. Yeah. Well, I get a question about the makeup. How do you do it so close to your eyes without like? Like you do it, I, I, I'm looking at it. You, they're, they're on, it's on your eyelid. What'd you say your name was? Bill. William. I'll talk to you soon, William. Have a good night. You too. Call from Jen. 
Jen. Hello. How are you, Jen? How are you? <laughs> I'm all right. I'm doing. I'm actually. I'm feeling pretty good tonight. That's tonight. good too. I'm feeling good too. Why are you, Why are you doing good? You know, I can tell you're not just bullshitting me. I hear it in your voice, Jen. You sound like you're doing good. I am. I've had a really productive day today. Interesting. We had another. Gu the guy right before called in and said the exact opposite. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> Tell me why your day was productive, Jen. Well, I mean, I worked today, but it was a pretty good day at work. I work in sales, so, I mean, when it's a good sales day, it's a good day in general. You get, I a, feel. You get a hot, spicy commission? I did it today. Too bad it wasn't payday. Ooh. Well, what, do you, what is it that you sell? Um, I sell phones. I work for one of the big, big phone companies. You know, you, that's a tough sell, be, selling phones uh, to people on the phone. Because if you called me to try to sell a phone, you know, I would probably just tell you I already have a phone because that's well, how we're talking. You know what? I, well, I work in person. And then usually people come to me and they tell me their phone is broken. Uh but sometimes I do have to convince people to buy phones, but I feel okay, like I thought phones you were like is a phone market. telemarketer. No, I work. Uh, it's an easy market to like sell phones. No, I don't, I'm not a telemarketer. I sell like, um, like, like at a Verizon store. Oh, okay, you work at a Verizon store selling yeah. selling phones. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> do you get screamed at a lot by people who come in and their phone is broken and they're so angry and they have no one to take it out on but you? Oh, all the time. I think I get a lot of angry people getting mad at me for not knowing why they don't have service. Because I, I, I don't know, man. I just sell the phone. Who is the most unreasonable person you have encountered during your time doing this? Oh, man. <laughs> There's so many people. Um, one time, so when people buy phones, um, they obviously have to pay the tax on the phone. And I got yelled at by somebody who's like you know who they're older so they should know what they they've been t paying taxes all their life and they got mad at me that i charged them tax on a phone that they didn't want to take the phone and i was like okay <laughs> why is that why is them paying taxes on the phone any different you, you have to pay sales tax on everything i know that's why i, I didn't understand i told them that it was st like it's standard you like you 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 live in a state that charges hella tax, man. Hmm. Yeah, that is very weird. Yeah, that's like probably if you, like if I buy like if I buy a fucking sandwich and I have there's sales tax for that. You don't yell at the sandwich <laughs> person. Yeah, like you know, I, I'm not charging like you, you the can't tax. Need a phone. No, but. Do you think that we should raise taxes or lower them? Oh, well, I mean, taxes where I live are, ta taxes in California, first of all, are insane. So I don't think we should raise taxes. Taxes are already, I feel, up the butt. Have you ever been confused? You know, yeah, I actually am right now. Why are you confused right now? Um, I've been having issues with my best friend lately. And, um, we've been best friends for like seven years now. And, uh, we probably didn't ever start, like ever fight before. Like it may be like we met at high school, but, um, but not recently, like the past couple years, probably like two or three, um, I feel like she hasn't been the greatest friend to me. And, um, she constantly, I feel, she talks shit about my boyfriend, and then she'll just try to say sorry every single time. And she makes, she pushes me away by always, like, she kind of talks down sometimes on, like, my situation or makes it seem like it's not as important as what she's going through. And I don't know, I just, sometimes it makes me feel really alone because it's like, that's one of my longest friends. And um, now... I just feel like I don't have you as a friend anymore. Mm. What do you think? Uh, she said this has been happening in like the last two to three years. Hello, puppy. 
I'm sorry, what? You said this has been happening in... You said this has been happening over the course of, like, the last two to three years, specifically. It's pretty... Not recent, but... You know, you had... I mean, you had a solid... I think, yeah, we had a... We had a... A friendship for a long time that, you know, I, she was my ride or die, you know? And then I think of recently... I don't know, maybe... I mean, we're older now. We have, like like actual adult fucking problems you know so i think that takes into account like why we're always so stressed and maybe she kind of takes it out on me maybe or i don't know or how, how old were you when you first became friends with this person um we were like 13 yeah you know and this is nothing new and i'm not a real therapist uh, and I've, uh, this is not a sentiment of originality in whatsoever uh, way, shape, or form. But look, you know, you've heard that thing of like, you know, obviously, how old are you now? Uh, 21. 21. You're obviously not the same person at 21 that you were when you were, you know, fucking 13. And look, you know, I have great friends, uh, uh, you know, that I've had since I was 10, and it's just worked out that way because we've sort of developed our personalities alongside each other but there's nothing wrong with you know eh, we're kind of just not jiving anymore you know because you're a different person than you were when you first met there's nothing wrong with that yeah. you know um are you afraid because this is like one of your only friends um well she's not my only friend but she is like probably like one of my longest friends but she's also been my best friend. Like through, we've been through a lot of shit together, so it kind of just sucks too. Like that, I'm like been recently thinking about just like ending the friendship. Look, you'd be justified to do that. It sounds like you know you're removing people from your life that don't have any value uh, to add to it. That's and by the way, do that with pride. Actually, you feel good. I know you feel bad about it, but you should feel good about it. it should make you feel fucking like. I mean, I don't know, this is just a, uh, you know, I don't know, I don't know shit about balls, but, um, you know, just like, I like the idea of you looking at this more of a, uh, how do I put this, like a, a, you're regaining power, you're defining your own path, you're, you're, you're like a god, you're plucking people <laughs> out of your life that don't fit in there, you know, it's, it's, th t take it like that if you can, you know, I just you, don't try to feel empowered by it. You don't have to. You don't have to hurt her. You're not hurting her. You're not gonna go. You're not gonna go to her and be like, "Hey, you know, uh, fuck you," and I don't want to be <laughs> friends with you anymore. And you should, you know, d go in live in a ditch or whatever. But uh, yeah, you're just you're just ending the ending the the relationship. It's pretty justified, it sounds like. Yeah, I think so too. I just, I think it's like one of those things where you it's been around for so long, you're kind of scared to get rid of it. You know, and it's, I know it's a person, not like an object, but it kind of feels the same way. Well, what would you say your name was? Jen. Well, Jen, um, you know, look, don't be afraid to get rid of people who don't uh, align with your life or add value in any way, shape, or form. And, um, you know, I wish you the best of luck in navigating thank the you. situation. Thank you. I appreciate you. For sure. Uh, thank you for calling in, Jen. I'll talk to you soon. Bye. I don't know why I keep saying I'll talk to you soon. That's like become my new thing that I say when I'm hanging up the phone. All from Mitch. Mitch. Gek. What are you doing right now? I'm sitting on my couch. I got you on TV. Pretty much it. What were you doing before you were doing what you are doing right now? Uh, I was make, making a drink, took the dog for a walk, and uh, had a stressful day, so you tend to help me unwind. Have we spoken before? We have not. I discovered what? you on TikTok maybe like a month or two ago and followed you and been watching you three times a week since. Rad. Thank you, dude. Why did you have no a, a stressful day? Uh, I have a stalker. 
You have a stalker. I do. So uh, I happened to run into them while I was out today. And so it kind of set off the anxiety that I have. Are you comfortable telling me about your stalker? I mean, I'll talk about it, but, uh, you know, I'll let you know if I'm not comfortable. Tell me about your stalker. Uh, there's someone who I went on a couple dates with and, uh, you know, I just wasn't feeling it after a couple, after a couple times seeing each other and then let them know that I wasn't really interested and couldn't take the hint, I guess. And so, uh, didn't hear from them for about a month and then all of a sudden, like I noticed they were showing up at my work and then they were showing up near the places where I shop and stuff like that. And so I don't know if it's coincidences or, you know, but it's, uh, you know, it, it gives you a bit of paranoia. There's that always underlying paranoia of it. What do you think they want from you? problem and I'm honestly afraid to talk to them because I have them blocked on everything and right. if I see them in person or like if I'm out now keep in mind like recently you know within the last year because everyone's wearing masks and stuff I don't even know if they're around and uh, I moved not that long ago in September and I have yet to tell anybody that I've moved because I'm so afraid of it to get back to them. Those are reasonable fears. Yeah. Have you taken any sort of judicial action against them? Uh, I mean, I've filed, like, I've made it known to uh, the authorities, but really, like, nothing, nothing, like, violent or anything like that has really happened or any, like, threats. It's more just they show up out of nowhere and it freaks me out and, you know, what can I do? I can't really call the... I And I, I feel guilty if I were to call the police and say hey like this person showed up at my work or I mean I don't think it's I don't, I don't I think you it. should feel I don't think it's you know you should feel guilty I mean I mean here's the thing right if they here's the way I see it if this person is bothering you to the point where you think where, where to the point where you feel the need to get the authorities involved, that right there validates that it is worth getting the authorities involved. Yeah. So it's not something to feel guilty about. See, like, I'm... And I think that's part of my issue. Like, it's been going on for well over a year. Like, before the, the pandemic and everything like that. And... I and I like to, you know, I don't try to sound conceited or cocky or anything like that in saying that I feel like I'm a really nice guy. And so with that, I feel like I, I'm taking advantage of in regards to that. And I feel like they know that it would take a lot mm. of them to get me to actually do something. I mean, I've, I've, spoken about it to other people as well right you know it's not something that I keep to myself and it's not anything that I was really planning on talking about tonight I was just going to call in and tell you what I was looking at right but um, <laughs> it's uh, 
it, it takes a lot for me to take action about something, I guess. And, uh, you know, I ha like I said, I have people I've spoken to about it, but it is, there is that underlying, it's caused me a lot of anxiety over the last little What while. Did you say and then, was? you know, today, what's that, sorry? Oh, sorry, go ahead. I actually kind of want to hear about what happened today. I was just, I literally went, my, I went into my bedroom yesterday and I smelled the burning smell and I couldn't figure out where it was coming from and it was coming from the fan in my bedroom and so I decided to unplug it and I went out today to buy a new fan and I was walking around Walmart and I, I saw them and I knew it was them right away from the jacket they were wearing. And I just kind of like scooted down another aisle. And I don't know if they saw me, but I saw them. And, you know, when things like that happen, because I live in a pretty small town. <clears throat> um, when things like that happen where you cross paths, I don't know if it's a coincidence or a bit Right, it's right, right. Right. Yeah, that's, that's definitely stressful. Yeah. What did you say your name was? Mitch. Well, Mitch, listen, don't feel guilty about, you know, taking action that you personally feel justified to take. You know, you're the only person that um, can be the judge of whether or not you are justified to take any sort of action. So don't feel guilty. All right. What are you looking at? Uh, I'm still sitting on my couch. My cats are running all over the place. Um, and I've got you on the TV, but I've got you muted. And it's very much a lag in between, so you're not matching up with your words. And then I have... I never do. I'm a hypocrite. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I appreciate you calling in and sharing. I'll talk to you soon. All right. Have a good night, man. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you too. Bye. Call from Pee Pee Poo Poo. Pee Pee Poo Poo, is that you? It's me. Pee Pee Poo Poo, how are you? I'm uh, pretty good, how are you, man? <sighs> you know, I'm doing all right, Pee Pee Poo Poo. That's good, that's good. I'm so curious about you, Pee Pee Poo Poo. You seem like you have a lot of, like, you get a lot of mystery to you. And I and I want to sort of see what makes you tick, you know? I mean, you pro are you aware of the fact that you have a lot of mystery surrounding you? And you're, that's sort of the vibe that you're giving off? It's a combination of Pee Pee and Poo Poo. Mm. How long did you have to experiment and tinker around to find this perfect combination that has made you who you are today? Uh, well, uh, I, I do it into a condom and then I, then I put it back up. Mm, you pee pee and you poo poo into a condom and then you put it up into your anus? Yeah. Yeah. Mm, what, 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 I, all right, so I know that now you know, okay, of course, that is the sort of code by which you, uh, become who you are. You pee and poop into a condom and you put it up into your anus, but you didn't always know the benefits of that. You had to experiment to discover these benefits. What, what was that first time conducting this experiment like? Uh, I, was, uh, I was watching Ghostbusters and uh, the Slimer, Slimer came on the screen. And I just, I had to go to the bathroom, but I didn't want to go. I didn't want to go to the bathroom because it's like, yeah, you know, I had to like, get up and walk. Of course. And I had, a, I had a dome sitting on the counter and I was like, you know what? I was going to go. And I went in it and then I was like, I, I can't throw it in the garbage can because it's going to stink. So I just, I, I watched Slimer eat a pizza and then I just, I put it up. And did it change your life? Well, yeah, well, I'm, I'm, I'm still alive today. What are you looking at? Um, I'm, I'm looking at the screen. I'm just looking at the gag. Can you do me a favor? What's up? Are you sitting or standing? Laying. Can you stand up? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. All right. Can you turn around? 
turning around. Have you turned? Yeah. What are you looking at? Um, a wall. What's on the wall? Uh, it's this this painting. It's my wife bought it. It looks. I don't. It's not even a painting. It's like fucking some cloth shit in a frame. Can you like describe it to me? It's like uh some wavy lines, like a black line, a blue line. It's like a seventies kind of. I don't know what the fuck it is. Does your wife know that you pee and poop into a condom and put it back up into your anus? <coughs> well, yeah, well, yeah. It's part of the deal. How does she feel about it? I mean, it's erotic. She's into it. It's an expression. Does she ever watch you do it? But yeah, she participates in the pee pee poo poo. Put so she peeps and pees and poops into a condom and then you put it up your anus. Right. Does it ever go up her anus? From time to time. What do you call this act? Well, if if it's been in the freezer, it's an Alaskan pipeline. And if it's warm, we call it summer breeze. Do you love your wife? Oh, yeah, yeah. What do you love about her? Uh, you know, like, I, I like that, and uh, she cooks really good, and, uh, 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 she looks, she looks good, she smells nice, she doesn't ever smell like poo, ever. Ever. Is, but wouldn't that be a bad thing, because you seem to kind of like poo? Well, no, it's, it's, it's encapsulated. Is your wife with you right now? No, no. She she fucking hates your show uh, more than anything on Earth. Actually, she left the room earlier because I was watching your show. Why does she hate my show? Oh, she fucking... I, she just... I don't know. She just looks at you and she's like, I fucking I can't do this right now. Every time. I understand. It's not for everyone. I mean, I like it. I appreciate that. Where'd the fish go? Doesn't matter. Okay. What'd you say your name was? Uh, well, my real name is John. Well, Pee Pee Poo Poo, I appreciate you sharing what you shared with us this evening. And tell your wife I said hello. I'm going to. I'm going to tell her tomorrow when she wakes up from her nap nap. I love you, Pee Pee Poo Poo. I'll talk to you soon. Love you, Gek. Later, bro. Good night. Call from Scott. 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 Hello. Hello. Scott. No way. Is this the gay? This is the gag. Oh is man. This Scott. I sent you a text last night, and I said that uh, I I have reason to believe that I'm the toxic person in all of my relationships. You sent me a text. You texted the gag line. I did, yeah. Saying that you believe that you are the toxic person in all of your relationships? This is correct. And what makes you believe that? Um, well, whenever I start talking with somebody, I block them from my Snapchat story so that I can post them or so I can post things without them knowing that I'm ignoring them. Um, Whenever you okay, whenever you start talking to someone on Snapchat, you block them from seeing your Snapchat story so that they don't know that you are posting on your story without responding to them first. Correct. Here's what you should do. I believe you need to. First of all, anyone. I think there's this. This. How do I put this? I'm actually. I've kind of been thinking about this lately because, like, you know, I have a bunch of people. Not, I'm not, I, 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 there's no one who, I've, I've, not, there, I don't get messages where I'm like, uh, fuck this guy or anything, but like, I have messages where I'm like, oh, fuck, I, I want to like respond to this, but I can't right now because my, the, I, I only have time to give a brief one and it deserves a longer one. So I leave a lot of shit on unread and then, um, but I still am like posting things. And my mentality of it is like, I'm a grown ass man 
This person I'm talking to is a grown ass person. You know, there's no, there's no, I have, neither of us should have any room in our lives for this fucking guy, for you fucking ignoring this. You know, just, just do, live your life. Do what you're going to do. Don't, I, don't get so wrapped up in the drama of the, I think to, to block this person, it's a little, I don't know, insecurity is not the word, but like. Dude, you gotta be comfortable with, like, someone- If someone gets upset with you because you posted on your story without answering them first, that's kind of their problem. And you gotta look at it that way. You know, to- To- To, so, to be so heavily on the defensive that you're gonna block them is- Is feeding too much into drama of the situation that is not even there. Does that make sense? I, does that resonate yeah. with you in any way, shape, or form? Yeah, a little bit. I kind of. I would stop doing that. I would stop blocking people, and I would just get comfortable with the idea that someone might be upset with you for not responding to them, and just be like, "Well, if that's the case, then that's your problem." Because I'm living my life. I'll get back to you when I get back to you. You mm -hmm. know, you don't have to be so defensive ab about it. If that makes sense. Yeah. I Another toxic trait that uh, one of my friends pointed out of mine is that when I start talking to somebody, I like am 100% with them. So for like the first week or whatever that we're talking, I'm just nothing but them is on my mind or whatever. And then after that, I get bored of them and then I'll just ignore them. And then I'll kind of like, ease back in and out of the relationship. Are, are they, yeah, These are like romantic relationships you're referring to. Correct. Um, okay, so you'll be obsessed with someone, then you'll get bored with them. Yeah. And then you'll ghost them. Well, not, not completely ghost. Like, I, I make them... Hmm. Um, I still talk to them. Just like... Mm. I, I say that I have uh, schoolwork and stuff, and then I just go do other things instead of talking to them. This is a tough one. I've thought about this before because I'm, I've, I'm, I, I haven't made like a, a in. I have. I don't. I don't have like a. Uh, what's what is this like? Um, set in stone idea of what two people at the beginning of a relationship owe each other because on one because what one someone could say you don't know it you don't owe anyone anything if you want to stop talking to them just fucking stop talking to them you don't you don't owe them anything you know um mm -hmm. but i don't know if that's necessarily what i believe um I think you should do whichever option makes you feel the most at peace with it, right? And so if it mm -hmm. would make you feel best to... If you're like, ah, if you feel bad about it, if you feel bad about ghosting these people, then, um, you know, just be honest. Just be like, hey, I'm sorry, I don't think this is working. And and, and you don't, by the way, you don't, if if you are, be start talking to someone and then you just get bored of them, that's fine. You don't owe, any, you don't owe anyone anything romantically, ever. I believe that. Um, if you start talking to someone, you get bored of them, and it makes you feel better to sort of give them some closure and in turn give yourself some closure, then, you know, I think you should. But if not, again, I'm not set in stone in this. I could be convinced either way, but I, I you know, I don't think that you necessarily owe them anything. Mm -hmm. Especially if, you know, it's, it's a new relationship. It's not like, you know, you've been dating for, for years or, or even months or anything. Yeah. The problem, though, is that when I find somebody that I, like, really like, and that I, I want to spend time with all the time, I just, I don't, I, I don't know whether I can't convince myself, like, that I want to keep spending time with them. I, I guess, maybe it's my attachment issues, maybe that's what it is. Who knows? Mm. Well, that's a conversation for you to have uh, with a real therapist. Mm-hmm. This is true. What'd you say your name was? Scott. Thank you for calling in, Scott. I'll talk to you soon.
Thank you. Have a good one, guys. All from Ted or Teddy, Teddy. To accept. All Teddy! From... Ted or Teddy, Teddy. Forget BGE. You're calling G E C. How you doing, Bubba? I'm all right. Is that so? What is, it, what is Bubba? But Bubba is what I call. Well, I'm also from. I heard Jessica on there. Bubba is like a bub or a bud or a bubba, term of endearment for a man to another man. Can can it be used by men to women? Can it be used? Is it exclusively in use by and towards men? Well, it, I guess it depends on your where you're going with it. You know what I mean? I call a woman Bub or Bubba, but that don't mean I'm going to kiss her. If you're kissing them, you can't say Bubba. So if you're romantically involved with a woman, it's not appropriate to call her Bubba. I don't, I don't, I don't, I wouldn't do it. Is it, is it anything, is it like dude at all? Like I call, I call I women dude. I'm no, like, I'm if I, even if I'm romantically involved with, I would call, you know, her dude. I don't think it negates the, the romantic. No, you can be in the bed with a woman doing stuff and call her dude. It's okay, but if you call her Bubba, that's not good. <sighs> Did you say you're also in Texas? I'm out here in uh, East Texas, and holy man, they can't even get a bike. Dude, I had to drive into town to get pizza today. Fucking Tell pizza. me I mean, how much ba how much battery is left on your phone right now that you're using? To oh, talk dude, to I got a generator. I got generators. We got firewood, man. I did. I have fifty gallons of gas. I ain't going nowhere. You got. You got. We got to get you hooked up with Jessica because she's fucking dying over there. Well, I was. She's got a boyfriend that she doesn't like. Well, I I do it right, man. I got a truck. I take her to town. I take her to get barbecue, whatever she needs. Hmm. Anyway, man, I didn't call about the blizzard, man. That's a whole bunch of hype. I was calling Tell about called something about. else. Well, okay, here's the deal. And I don't know if this is my business, but it's my friend's business. And I like to get into my friend's business. So I have a friend. I've known him forever. And he was living in another buddy's house. The buddy was renting him out the house. Well, that friend trashed it. Basically, nothing short of smearing poop on the wall. And he owes my other buddy money. Now, I'm trying to figure out, do I get in on this? Do I say something? Do I do I say something about this? Because it's going to make people mad. But I feel that it's my place when someone owes money. I don't like to, I don't owe anyone money. You know what I'm saying? What? Tell me all the parties involved so that I, I get this. All right, so you have your friend... Well, let's say you, my friend, his you, name is Jeff. If you, if, you, if you could, could you explain the, the parties involved? Okay, there's a man named Justin. He yeah. likes to dress uh, in a lot of leather. He wears a lot of leather. It's strange. Then we have another man, his name, let's call him Brian. Now, Brian, owes, he was living in Justin's house. Okay? And then Brian owed Justin some money. And I have nothing to do with any of it, but I know both of them. And I just can't help but not say something to them because I feel that Justin doesn't want to ask for the money because it might be bad for the friendship. But then I feel the other dude is taking advantage of the other guy's softness, if you will. Maybe I do need to step, put a boot in the door, you know? Uh, you mentioned something as well about uh, one party smearing poop on the other party's house when did this occur right. well that's just the way i see it no one told me that's what happened but in my head i just know someone ate a lot of space dust and started smearing poop on the wall man i just this in my head that literally happened well i don't know i mean what is literal these days what is real <laughs> so y y y you know what so you imagined your friend smearing poop on your other friend's house? It didn't happen? You think it's going to happen? Where, Where is this event on the spectrum of reality? Well, on my spectrum of reality, it 100% happened. I mean, 
in my head, I can see him taking uh, the rag he used because part of the water was out because he hadn't been paying the water bill. He had no, he didn't have his shower to go. He definitely didn't have no toilet paper. He didn't have no money, so he takes the rag or something, and then he's like, "Fucking fuck this guy! He's making me pay. He's not giving me a loan." And he just did a big smear, probably wrote a big F and a U on the wall or something. Now, Ted. So I'd say it did happen. I'd say it happened, but in their reality, I'm not sure. Ted, c- can I ask you something? And I want you to be honest with me. Yes, sir. I feel like there's a possibility that it was you who smeared the poop on Justin's wall. And you already sort of went forward on the advice about whether or not you should get involved. And you're coming to me for confirmation that you indeed should have smeared poop on this man's wall. It's a big problem I have. Uh, It's called the Fregoli delusion, where you think everyone's the same person in a different costume. Like, you are actually the same guy as the guy who did the pooping. And it might have been me, or it might be you, or the same dude in a different chair, right? Mm Mm-hmm. So, yeah, I guess, I mean, if someone did do you wrong, do you do that? Well, Ted, if you owe yourself money... I think you should pay yourself back. Okay. Um, so I say something. Yeah, okay. I'm following, man. I'm following. Are you done with me, man? I feel like they're lulls in conversation, but I, I'm looking at my computer. I'm staring into your face. I see this smile that's almost popping out, and I see those eyes looking at me, and it's just like we're there together. Same dude, same place, same dream. I don't know how to end it. I don't know what we do. But we can move on or we can be done. I have more. I think that, man, I have some other stuff that I've really been wondering about. You know, I moved out to the country from the city about nine months ago, and I've been living out here just trying to sort through some things, think my way through stuff. And, uh, you know, you hit on this reality topic. And this is, I know you're not a real therapist, but uh, this reality thing, man, it's a weird one, huh? What do you think is the weirdest thing about it? Well, let me put it like this, man. Well, I'd say the Mandela effect is probably my weirdest thing about reality is Mandela effect's kind of been messing with me. The Black Tom attack was a weird one, if you know about that. 1914 German terrorists attacking the Bay in New York, New York, destroying the Statue of Liberty. That stuff's pretty weird. What is the the Mandela effect? The Mandela effect is basically 50% of the population remembers uh, Nelson Mandela dying in prison, and the other 50% remembers Nelson Mandela dying in 2012. Basically, dude, whenever they turned on that CERN reactor and plugged in the God particle, it uh, it put us in a time loop. So, if you'd mind, I can go. Can I go a little, like, one step up on this ladder of reality weirdness? Sure. Okay. So, it all starts back in the fuck in. It all starts back with Donald Trump's uncle, John G. Trump. John G. Trump, and everyone, you can look me up on this. This is real. John G. Trump was the lead engineer at MIT whenever Nikola Tesla died. Nikola Tesla claimed to have a time machine. So Nikola Tesla's time machine was gotten by Donald Trump's uncle. All of a sudden, Donald Trump's running the world. Go back to the year 1898. There's a book written called Baron Von Trump's Marvelous Underground Journey, where a boy is led through time portals by a man named Don. And he's led back to Russia to fight indigenous people and underground reptiles. He, um, the same author, his name was, uh, dang man, I ain't gonna remember this guy's name. Y'all can look it up though. Uh, he wrote a book in 1900 called The Last President about a man who was elected president. He was a very rich, wealthy land boy, and he had a house on Fifth Avenue, blah, blah, blah. A whole bunch of stuff gets weird. So basically, flash forward to the year 1999 when Conan O'Brien is writing an episode of The Simpsons where Homer is parodying the uh, Matt Damon and Goodwill Hunting, and he's up there like a janitor solving an equation in the hallway. 
Go look this up. The equation on that board in 99 is actually the God particle, which wasn't discovered until 2010, 2012 is when they plugged that God particle into the Hadron Collider over there in Switzerland in the sun. And that experiment ended on December 21st, 2012. Basically what I'm telling you, Donald Trump is a time traveler. Whenever CERN reactor got flipped on, it started messing with reality. Like, let me ask you this, man. Did Curious George have a tail? Donald Trump is a time traveler. Do you believe Donald that he Trump uses his power to travel orange. through time for good or for evil? Well, I don't know, man. If I had it figured out, I don't know if we'd even be having this conversation about poop and space dust and CERN reactors and particle colliders and shit, man. Um, but, yeah, I mean, dude, I think if anyone's going to travel through time, it's going to be Don Trump. I mean, he did come out all orange. They say you got to smear yourself in that uh, iodine whenever you go through the time machine. Right, right. You uh, so he so you think that he's orange because of you know a, a sort of level of iodine that he wouldn't have spread on himself if he had not been tasked with traveling through time to ensure that Curious George did not have a tail. Well, of course, yeah, that's just one example, man. That wasn't like my. My main one that I had, like, where do you remember? You know where Peru is in South America on the western coast of South America? Yeah. Longitudinally, what state does that line up with? Like Peru on the west coast of South America, what United State is that under? How do you I remember I don't know. It? What is it? It's like actually under Florida. See, I remember it being under Arizona and New Mexico when I was growing up. But it changed because basically reality and the stability thereof is very malleable not what you think hmm. there are other so you, examples like you know what, what what is what is what is your main example well the main example i think is nelson mandela because i remember uh clinton uh, bill clinton big daddy bill giving a speech about nelson mandela's death in prison in the late 90s but apparently he didn't die until 2012. The secondary example is called the Black Tom attack. No one remembers this. This is a 1914 German terrorist come to New York City Harbor. They blow up a big bomb. It's actually the largest non-nuclear explosion in history, and it damages the Statue of Liberty. They never taught us this in history class. Can I ask you a question? Yes, sir. You, right now, on the phone, talking to me. Where do you believe you are? I think I probably died back in 2019. Um, I drank a whole bunch of space juice, we'll call it, and ended up getting in my car. got diabetes. I was going to the store to get some juices and stuff, and I drank this stuff. Space juice is basically a chemical that makes you not think and behave the way you might normally do it. But uh, anyway, I come to, and I'm in Oklahoma, dude. So you think that you died of a simultaneous succumbing to diabetes and a drunken automobile accident? I wasn't drunk. No, it's another sort of juice where you just drink a little bit. Yeah, but um, yeah, I think probably we all died, and we're all getting queued up. You think we all died? Well, I think we're all dead in this in this realm, in this level of reality. We're probably all dead. We've all passed, and we're waiting to get rebooted back in the sim. Ted, before we go, tell me what would you like to be rebooted as? What's uh, your ideal life after being rebooted? Probably, probably if you were rebooted as a female gecko, and I was booted as your baby boy, and you took care of me, and you milked me and did me right. What do you want from me as your mother? I what want to know want sort of your what? expectations of me because that way, uh, you know, obviously I'm not going to remember this conversation after we've been rebooted because it will wipe a lot of our memory. But I do feel like right. certain elements of me will be able to remember. You know, I will be able to take certain parts of me uh, with me. And... I just want to know what I can do to be the best mother to you. 
Well, you're going to have to be nurtured, and I know everyone says that, but they don't know what it means because, I mean, none of us are really mothers, are we? But I think I want a mom that gives me warmth, gives me love, gives me milk. I think milk's a big part of it. Well, I'll prepare. None of this is sexual. No, I know. Thank you, Ted. I appreciate you. Love you, Bubba. Love you too. Take care, Love son. Bye.